Now, we are back here again with another TPS video. You already know how swag do. TPS did shout me out. You know, the editor hit me up, man. I felt, man, I felt good, bro. You know, just to be even be on TPS video, bro. I felt good, bro. Now, these are the five NFL quarterbacks who will improve in 2022. And five who will decline. Now, I know you guys are looking at me because I'm looking down. It was too damn long. I don't know all that in my head. I don't know all that in my head, so I had to look down on my phone. But five who will decline. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to get pissed off if Matt Jones is not, in his, not on his video or, or on his list. I'm going to get mad. If Mac Jones is not on this list, I'm gonna get hot because he's a rookie and duh, he has to improve. He did, he did throw some picks. Yeah, he did. He went crazy. Then he took us to the playoffs. Bro, I'm telling you, if Mac Jones not on this video, I'm gonna be hot. Let's get into it. 2022 is going to be a year of change. Mark my words. words. I think you're going to see some dramatic I'm going to eat a food, too. A little rice and meat. Don't forget me. The secondary if that's okay with y'all, y'all want some? Yeah. Y'all want some? Some good old rice and meat. Every year we see some NFL players right, take their game to the next level, 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 level while others fall off the proverbial cliff. As we begin to watch their careers decline before our very eyes. It's the quarterback, the quarterback position, position, of course, is no exception. Whether it's a change to their coaching staff, their supporting cast, or an entire change of scenery, there are at least five NFL quarterbacks we totally expect to improve. And they better be back in it, too. And five whose decline seems inevitable. So, let's get right into it. Improve. Two attacks by a little one. Okay, this has... I mean, duh. But damn, that's gonna be on your first list. Tua? Tua gonna be on your first list? It should have been back. But I see because of the Miami Dolphins and you got Tyree Hill and you got Jalen Waddle and you got all those other speedsters that play running back and stuff. Okay, let's keep going. It's to be the year that Tua breaks out, right? Regardless of how you feel about Tiger Bailoa, this much is undeniable. He's 13-8 and eight through two seasons as Miami starter. He has a stellar 66.2 completion percentage and 27 touchdowns against 15 picks. So, that's not awful by any means. No, that's not too bad. He was once viewed I'm gonna be real. generational talent and was even taken before Justin Herbert. You can see why Dolphins Nation expected far better up to this point. Well, everything is there now for Tagovailoa to absolutely go off in 2022. Miami GM Chris Greer has given Tua a top-level supporting cast to work with. He traded for all-pro wideout Tyree Kill and signed Raheem Mostert, Chase Edmonds, and Sony Michelle to improve a lackluster rushing game. The leaky O-line... Hey! They got, a, they got my former Patriots, Sony Michelle? Sony Michelle? They got Sony Michelle. That's crazy. Got my former Patriot. That's crazy. In New Orleans Saints. Somebody calling me while I'm trying to do the damn video. Man. Oh, Dallas Cowboys standout Connor Williams. Not to mention the Finns also signed receiver Cedric Wilson Jr. following a He good, don't get me wrong. That's a pretty deep supporting cast considering that Miami He went crazy with the bond of Jalen Waddle. And to it will also Cowboys tremendously from the arrival of new head coach Mike McDaniel, who is a proud member of the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree. With playmakers all across the board, Tagovailoa and McDaniel can really build a special offense here. Mark it down. 2022, the year he might do good. time finally arrives. Decline, Tom Brady. 
Okay, wow. Let's get this out of the way. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers remain a Super Bowl contender and should be considered the massive favorites to win. I got no receivers. But let's be realistic. A 45-year-old Brady isn't going to repeat as the NFL's passing yards or passing touchdowns leader. This is not a knock against the ageless goat. The reality is, is that the supporting cast around him isn't what it once was. No. He once had four world-class pass catchers at his disposal. All he got is Mike Evans. And what I think, what, Chris Godwin? Chris dead. My pitch was beating, y'all. We're not playing, y'all, but I'm just saying, if, if we play y'all again, Brady, you're done. I don't think you hear what I'm saying. If we play the Bucks again, Brady, you're done. You are done. It's over. I love you, bro. But you don't got nobody. I'm locking up, I'm locking up Evans. And I'm locking up Chris Goodwin. Godwin, whatever how you say his name. You're done. And Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, and Rob Gronkowski. Well, the mercurial AB was released late last season, and Gronk retired for a second time. Godwin is recovering from a torn ACL that he suffered in Week 15 of last year, and the Bucks don't even know when he'll return to the field. Oh, so he's not returning? Oh, you feel good? You are done for real. You don't have Chris Godwin. Okay. For an entire year. The Bucks have also lost two mainstay guards and Ali Marpet and Alex Kappa. Shaq Mason will fill one of those holes, but who's gonna be taking the other one? That is their 2022 opponents combined for a 533 winning percentage last year. Look, add it all up, and we're predicting that Brady may still be a top 10 QB, but certainly not an MVP candidate in 2022. The Bucks lost way too many key pieces, and the schedule is just way too unfriendly for him to hit 5,000 passing yards and 40 plus touchdowns again. Improve. Trevor Lawrence. I believe it. Really got a feel for I believe it. I mean, how many other first-year quarterbacks in NFL history have their type of drama that Trevor did under former head coach Urban Meyer? We refuse to blame Lawrence for that miserable rookie season. No, I didn't blame Lawrence. I never did. Laughing stock for 15 some odd years now, and Meyer was just the cherry on top of the clown circus. The good news is that Myers is long gone, and the Jaguars, dare we say, actually made some excellent moves to help their top pick of 2021 go off as a sophomore. For one, they hired an actual, qualified, offensive-minded, former Super Bowl-winning head coach in Doug Peterson. He did wonders in developing Carson Wentz in Philadelphia, and he turned Nick Foles into a Super Bowl MVP. So there's no reason to believe that Peterson can't make it work with a generational quarterback. He can. The Jaguars did overpay big time for Christian Kirk and Zay Jones in free agency. The Brandon Scherf contract carries risks, too. But at the end of the day, they are all giant upgrades on offense over what the Jags previously had. That's Here's true. Friend, Evan Ingram will supply Lawrence. Well, Evan Ingram won't be big. Target. And of course, Travis Etienne is back in the fold after missing his entire rookie year with a foot injury. No, the Jaguars aren't going to make the jump to Super Bowl contender in 2022. But Lawrence is primed for a special sophomore season after a very forgettable rookie year. Yeah, he's going to do good. So handedly ruined by Urban Meyer. Decline. Jimmy Garoppolo. Regardless of where Jimmy G winds up, what? he's not going to find a better situation than the one he had in San Francisco over the past three seasons. The 49ers were the perfect fit for a mediocre QB like Garoppolo. His limitations as a passer like... Basically, they basically saying that, to be honest, they should just let Jimmy and Trey Lance battle it out. Whoever, whoever wins, wins out of the battle. Like, come on, bro. I think Jimmy G should just stay, but it's a lot of stuff going on right now. Mass by Sam Fan's run heavy offense. Not to mention the explosive pass catching trio of George Kittle, Brandon Ayuk, and Debo Samuel. At this point, only the Seattle Seahawks and Carolina Panthers make sense as destinations for Garoppolo. And trust us, neither of them are anywhere close to contending. Garoppolo Baker's there. Playing with one of the NFL's most stacked rosters, all while being coached up by one of the league's best offensive staffs. He's not going to find a better situation with another team in 2022. And if he stays in San Fran, well, it's very likely he'll end up being Trey Lance's backup at some point. Wow, that might happen. 
He's still going to beat my Patriots, though. Yeah, if he do, um, you guys don't want to see if the Jets beat my Patriots, bro. Just 55.6 of his pass attempts were nine touchdowns and 11 picks. Wilson didn't have a single 300-yard passing game, and he was limited to just under 200 yards in seven outings. But I'm hungry as hell, you guys. I'm sorry. Peyton Manning didn't have stellar rookie years either. I don't think y'all care, though. Great lengths this offseason to bolster Wilson's supporting cast. For one, the offensive line should be a lot better now that Becky Beckton is back in the fold after missing all but one game in 2021. Okay. The Jets added standout guard Lincoln Tomlinson in free agency to complement 2021 rookie Benham Elijah Barrett Tucker. As far as skill okay. position players go, the Jets drafted Ohio State receiver Garrett Wilson in round one before snagging Iowa State running back Brees Hall in round two. This came after gangrene. Mm, they might be, they might be straight. This good. Not beating this bro. Green signed home Cincinnati, Cincinnati Bengals tight end CJ Uzama in free agency. These new weapons join a cast that already had Corey Davis, Braxton Berrios, Michael Carter, and Elijah Moore in the fold. Between the added year of development and growth, his new set of weapons, and a revamped O-line, Jets fans can expect a much better outing from Wilson in year two. Oh, and let's not forget that the dude got jacked this offseason, adding roughly 13 pounds of muscle, according to the QB himself. He did? Yeah, that should help as well. Declined. Kyler Murray. Damn. Over the 2020 and 2021 seasons is wow. No That's crazy. When he looked like one of the top MVP candidates last year. CBS, bro. Still haven't talked about Mac Jones. Murray can be a consistently great quarterback, but the dominoes aren't exactly lining up for that MVP-like season in 2022. Though it's not entirely his fault. Top wideout DeAndre Hopkins will be out for the first six games due to suspension, and we don't need to. That's a lot of games. This offense struggled without Hopkins last season. That's a lot of games. They brought back AJ Green and Zach Ertz and traded for Marquise Hollywood Brown, but none of those guys are on Hopkins level, and the offensive line still has its holes. Not to mention that Arizona has a brutal slate of games on their 2022 schedule. Murray will keep the Cardinals in playoff contention, but don't expect him to match or even top last year's totals this could be a rough year for the redbirds and their quarterback and it certainly doesn't help that murray and the team are already at odds over his contract negotiations that's true things could get interesting here that's Stay true tuned. improve matt ryan well this one's obvious okay. ryan was still putting up pro bowl like numbers on a mediocre falcons team from 2018 to 2021 and now he gets to play with one of the most stacked rosters in the entire league the Indianapolis Colts somehow missed the playoffs. I already know Matt Ryan's going to improve. A league leading seven Pro Bowlers. But with Matty Ice replacing the inconsistent Carson Wentz behind center, the Colts can now expect actually a still good. Great season. Ryan was solid in 2021 behind a terrible offensive line. Now he joins arguably the NFL's best blocking unit, anchored by Quentin Nelson and Ryan Kelly. Not to mention reigning rushing champion Jonathan Taylor will be lining up behind him in the backfield. And that Ryan also has 1,000 yard receiver Michael Pittman at his disposal. Things are going to be a lot Damn. easier for Matty Ice in 2022. Honestly, we expect one of his best seasons yet. I mean, we could even see him return to his 2016 MVP floor. Decline, Dak Prescott. Damn! Damn. Guy who was the top five quarterback last Damn. season. But this isn't a knock on Dak as much as it is on the decline, that boy. Cast. Prescott lost his go to receiver of four years, Omari Cooper who was traded to the Cleveland Browns. Two of Dallas's key starters on the O-line, Connor Williams and Lyle Collins, also found new homes this offseason. The underrated Cedric Wilson Jr., who racked up 45 catches for 602 yards and six touchdowns last year, signed with the Dolphins. He the did. He's still stuck with Ezekiel Elliott's ugly contract, meaning he'll get a lot more carries even though he's not a game-changing back anymore. Damn! Gallup is he might from a season-ending ACL tear, so it's unknown when he'll be back at full strength. Oh, he's not there. He still have enough talent to contend for another division title. But Prescott has lost way too many key pieces to retain his elite level of play. Losing Cooper That's especially true. stings because it now leaves Dak with just one Pro Bowl caliber wideout instead of two. That's and true. That is a big That's true. difference. Improve. Jalen Hurts. Hey. Improve. Just 
Hurts That's A.J. Brown. Brown. ...to help the Philadelphia Eagles sneak back into the playoffs. This was Hurts' first full season as a starter. So Bro, wait, how long? Weren't exactly Bro, they still didn't bring up that Jones. He still done with Dallas Goddard and rookie Devontae Smith as his only reliable pass catchers. Now he'll enter 2022 with one of the best... But I'm happy for Jalen Hurts, though. League, ...thanks to the addition of former Titan star A.J. Brown. Brown is arguably a top 10 receiver in the league, and we would certainly not doubt Smith's ability to enter that conversation as well in 2022. The offensive yeah. line and rushing game are already set, but Brown alone can completely change the dynamic of this Eagles offense yeah. and take it to a whole new level. Anyway, to see Jalen Hurts. Full NFL season under his belt, Philly fans already had reason to be optimistic about Hurts entering this year. Now he gets arguably the NFL's best pass-catching duo to work with. Expect a big season out of Hurts in year three. Hell yeah! Decline. Ryan Tannehill. The Denver Titans, Titans captured, captured the number one seed in the AFC last season, season. and Tannehill's play can't be cited as the main reason why. Tennessee largely relied on its ground game and suffocating defense. They still didn't bring up Mac Jones. Do you think I care about Tannehill? Okay. When the Titans needed Tannehill most, he just wasn't up for it. Just look at that costly interception that set up the Cincinnati Bengals victory over Tennessee in the divisional round. It just feels like Tannehill has hit a ceiling in Tennessee. And without AJ Brown, it's hard to envision his production getting any better. AJ Brown yes, the Titans traded for Robert Woods and drafted Traylon Burks, but Woods is coming off a season-ending ACL tear, and Burks isn't a proven product like Brown. Tennessee's leaky offensive line got even worse with the loss of Roger Saffold, who left for the Buffalo Bills in free agency. And the Titans haven't exactly found a suitable replacement there, which is a great cause for concern. Derrick Henry's body has a ton of mileage on it, and he missed most of last year with a foot injury. Will Henry stay healthy and get back to his MVP-like form? Well, if not, things become even more complicated for Tannehill. There's just way too many question marks and concerns for us to believe that Tannehill will bounce back in 2022. Their AFC South rivals all made moves to get better this offseason, so the division isn't going to be a cakewalk this time around. Good luck to Tannehill, and it's going to be interesting to see how long he can hold off Malik Willis for the starting job in Tennessee. But which other NFL quarterbacks will improve? Can't say Jones! Can't even bring up Jones! Bro, TBS, do you hate my Patriots or something, bro? You didn't even bring up Mac Jones, bro. Now, I don't know if he did it on purpose because he know that I'd be getting mad. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the TPS editor did that because he, he knows how I feel about my Patriots. And then you do this. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to try to keep my cool. It says five NFL quarterbacks who, who will improve. Or is that good because Matt Jones is like that? And Matt Jones did did so good as a rookie, he don't have to improve. It might be that. Okay, let me calm down. It might be that. It might be that because he did so good and stuff like that. You know, he don't really have to improve and he won't get he won't get the con because he's so good. And then also he's a 99 on Madden. I'll see you guys in the next video. I just, I got it. I'm sorry, TPS. I mean, I'm sorry, um, TPS editor.